Ashley from Face Off, if you guys have ever seen that show. What got you into doing all this stuff? Um, well, I started out as a musical theater performer, and then I started doing my own makeup kind of out of necessity as an actor, and it kind of just snowballed from there. I got into doing special effects, and then um, kind of by sculpting and molding and casting and painting, I got more into doing paintings and, you know, kind of everything, like, once you do one art form. So, a lot of it is, like, self-help? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I went to a school for special effects makeup. Yeah. But then built off of that by teaching myself as I went. How long would you say it took for you to get this one? Um, well, I've been doing makeup now for 10 years. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Since I started early since high school, but to get to this point where I'm at doing face off, doing the art, doing the conventions, about 10 years, yeah. Wow. So you're totally dedicated. Absolutely. Go her artwork is amazing. Like, Thank you yeah. have to check her out. It doesn't exist in my kit because of it. 
Um, so those are some things that you want to be aware of when you're getting into special effects. Read your labels, pay attention to everything, and also learn how to remove them properly because these are so important. So, so important because you want to take care of your skin, you want to take care of your actor. When you get to the point where you are working on like A-list celebrities, if you're working on an actor and you ruin their face, good luck ever getting a job in the makeup industry ever again because that's their bread and butter. So you really want to pay attention to how you are using these products and also how you're removing them as well. You, it's a spa day every day. Like I, I try and make it as comfortable as possible. I try to make sure they have everything they need. Um, and a lot of times it becomes therapy for them. They always tell me more than I probably need to know, but um, it's a, a great kind of give and take between the model and the actor and the makeup artist. So it's something you want to pay attention to. It's so funny when you have to make your, your person that you're doing makeup uncomfortable. You want to get them straws and stuff so they don't really yeah. make makeup. You want to get them in a comfy chair, a good position. You want to yeah. make sure you have no allergies. There's a lot more than just actually applying art. Yeah. You actually have to get people you do relax. Yeah, you have to be a bit of a people person to I really not. be not. I don't believe that. <laughs> um, you really do have to be a little bit of a people person to be. I, I would say an effective makeup artist. Um, I mean, there's there's so many things that go into being a makeup artist as a whole, and it depends on what facet that you're interested in. You know, you don't necessarily have to go into the full length of sculpting prosthetics. You don't have to learn the mold. You don't have to learn all those things. If that's something you're interested in, I'm happy to let you guys know any of those things. Um, but you can just be an on-set applicator. That's what, like, me Neil on the show does. She's, if you watch the judge match, how many watch that? Yeah, that was cool, right? I was stoked to see them in the lab. Um, but, like, me Neil hasn't sculpted in 10 years. So it's not necessarily something that's important to know. It does help. I think that as an artist, to be as well-rounded as possible is amazing. And if you can do that, do it. So, um, any more questions? We got anything? What up, Pinky? Sweet What are like your experiences on Face Off? What are my um like like your most favorite experience? Like obviously you can't fit everything in the Yeah. Um I there that's really the thing to um, remember is that when we're filming it's a ten hour day a lot of times and you they can't fit all of that. And there's like twelve stories and it dwindles, but like there are so many stories that are happening. Um, for me, a lot of it would be on the reveal stage, seeing my makeup kind of present itself and come to life, and seeing my model create this character in front of me, and two days before that, it was just an idea, and it, even then, it wasn't even an idea, so to see that, um, something that they didn't show on the, um, the latest episode, um, how many of you saw my homecoming queen? Yeah, that's my boo, I loved her, um, and, uh, no hate, just love. And what they didn't show is how my model moved in that makeup. She was actually double jointed, she was hyperextended, so she legitimately popped her shoulder out of place and was like walked on, like wonky and broken, stiff pirouette, and then landed in that cute I'm a homecoming queen pose. And to see that, when I didn't even know she could do that with her body, like the day before I was like, man, this would be cool, she's a contortionist. This would be cool if she, you know, could do stuff. And I was so worried that she wouldn't sell my makeup that when I saw her out there doing basically what I was dreaming of that night before, like, it was an incredible, like, dang, girl, I didn't you have that in you. Like, just amazing. So that was definitely a really cool experience. So, anybody else? I have a question for you. Ooh. What is your story you work for? Uh, I'm definitely not that much of a gore. I mean, I always like to joke that I, I'm a musical monster maker. All of my monsters need to have a show and song and a dance, you know? I like doing a little more whimsical. I think that's why, like, the Wizard of Oz challenge was one of my favorites because the Wizard of Oz was such an influential movie to me that being able to create characters that aren't just scary, that aren't just like these creepy, grotesque makeups, but you can actually feel for and you actually want to root for them. That's something that like a lot of, I mean a lot of people I think, especially when they're starting out, they fixate on doing the, the horror, they fixate on doing the guts, the wounds, the black eyes, and those are great and that's going to happen a lot in your career. 
But the makeups that stand out, at least in my mind, are like Edward Scissorhands. That's minimal makeup, but it's really, really well done. And it's a full Straight character. It it's too. so minimal, but it's something that's so impacting. You look at like the penguin from um, Batman Returns. Like it's just a nose piece, it's a brow, and it's hands. And then the rest of it's just makeup. And it's those little pieces that create this unique and individual character that you just fall in love with. And you're, it's so striking. And it doesn't have to be this big thing. So I think that's, I like to do understated makeups that you can see the, you can see the actor underneath, but it also is a, tr a transformative experience. You don't, you lose sight of who they are. You just see this character before you. So I guess that's more of my focus. Okay. So I saw him, and uh, who are you? Yes. What are your influences as far as like film and My influences, well definitely I just said V. Neal, like she did both of, um, the, she did Edward Scissorhands, she did the Penguin. Um, she also did This Is Doubtfire, R.I.P. She also did some of the Hunger Games. Yeah, she did. Any Hunger Games fans? Anyone? Hunger yeah, Games? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I kind of called face off a little bit of the Hunger Games, so it was like, just because it was kind of a battle to the death in a way. Um, nobody died that you know, that we know of. The show's not over yet. It's not There's over yet. season, so. We might battle to the death at the end. We'll see. Stay tuned. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, that, uh, those, she's definitely a, a big, big influence of mine. Um, and like a lot of the, like, that's one of the cool things about Face Off, I feel like, is that it is giving light to the makeup artists behind the scenes. Because most of the time, like, I could drop like 20 names and you would have no idea who I'm talking about. You know about me because she's a judge, you know about Neville because he's a judge. You don't get to hear about so many other artists that are incredibly talented and like probably like uh, Lois Burwell, who was on, is on uh, this newest judge, she worked on The Fifth Element, who's a Fifth Element fan. Yeah, like, I mean, the diva, like, oh my god, that makeup is amazing, and it just definitely encouraged me to be a makeup artist, but until she was on the show, you had no idea who touched that makeup, so that's something that I'm definitely happy to, like, also be kind of a voice for and be able to say this is, I mean, definitely, when you're watching, like, watch to the end of the credits. Who gets up and walks away before the end of the credits? Be honest. I do it. You do it. But a part of going to see a movie, I think, in the theaters is like paying attention to those people at the end because there's so many people that are involved in a film that like it's so important to recognize that. And even look into like IMDb, I'm always on it. Like who did what? Who was there? And it's my absolute favorite app. Yeah, I, I love use it more than anything. Else. I do too. Um, but anyway, so yeah, definitely those are some big influences of mine. And um, I think I mean I could go on for days about my influences. It's just being like as well rounded and like looking into like the movies that you love and finding out who's involved in them, so, yes. How much of a balance is uh, working with, uh, you know, say the, uh, the um, say the actor and everything, or actor, actress and everything versus the makeup and everything, like, uh, say for instance, like Doug Jones, who was originally supposed to be uh, the con uh, uh, but Yeah, he's actually working on Falling Skies right yeah, now. Yeah, he's working yeah. on projects which, and everything, which, yeah. but he's known for all the things like Pan Flavor, so yes. like, uh, being, uh, the yes. Pawn and uh, Tail Man and all that stuff, and, and so, like, how much, uh, you know, how much uh, impact uh, is the makeup versus, like, say, the actor? Or oh, is I it think, nice, a nice balance? Yeah. I think it does, like, and I, I think you would agree with that. Like, a makeup is only as good as its performer. Like, if you have somebody who, like, and unfortunately, you'll see that a little bit on Face Off, where you're like, I really like that makeup, but it's just wasn't really doing it for me. Usually it's because the model's not given it. They're not bringing their energy and bringing their life. And that's why like, I love using like amazing cosplayers because they always bring it. They're like, I got this. You don't need to worry about it. Well, it's like, okay, and just carrying the mask. Yeah. If he hadn't had that part, if it wasn't him doing yeah. it, I probably wouldn't have been sold on his makeup yeah. at all because he's just so animated and having that animation to yourself is really important when you're having your makeup done like that. Absolutely. So and there has to be a balance. Yeah. If you have a boring actor who doesn't want to be doing it, you're gonna have a really hard time selling your work. Absolutely, and that's, it's a definitely a constant struggle. Like, it, with like, say the show, like you don't necessarily, you might have a choice of a model, but you don't always get your first pick. Because it is, um, the way that we do model selections is whoever picked first for like the actual challenge, they pick their model last. And then the person who picked last for the challenge picks their model first. So, 
Megan, who's like the front runner that everybody goes for. I'm sure you've all seen her. She's that little petite spray blonde girl. That's the curly blonde? Uh, no, that, that's Amanda. Amanda was my muse, if you guys can remember me that far back. Um, she, this is her first uh, season on the show, and she had never worn prosthetics before. Also, like, she has never worn prosthetics before, and I, I can't um, say how, I mean, not how awesome she's been in them so far. Um, so you really, it can be like a, a kind of a, a gamble when you're working with people who've never worked with prosthetics before. They're either amazing or they're just miserable. And it has nothing to do with you as a makeup artist. It's just some people can't wear prosthetics. And like you can try to make it as pleasant as an experience as possible, but it is still something on your face. It's still a lot. And some people don't necessarily like that. So I can't even have my pillowcase touching my face for that long before I freak out. I don't yeah. know how you're handling the prosthetics. I mean, I've, I've been in prosthetics for like 12, 13, 14 hours, and that's something also that you don't necessarily realize on the show is we're there, like we finish makeups maybe around one on reveal day, and then we're there all day. Like we don't finish and leave till maybe 9.30. So it's like they've been in those big, bulky prosthetics for nine and a half hours, and so I love putting my models in stilettos because I'm just mean that That's way. Really cool. I'm so mean, but they look fabulous. <laughs> we have a question in the back. Yeah. Uh, my favorite look. I, you know, it's hard for me to pick just one because I, I mean, I had a blast and it's been such a, a great experience doing the show. And um, each there's a, definitely a couple that like I could do without, <laughs> but. Um, I would have to say, like, the Tin Man for me was definitely one of my favorites. Um, just to have V. Neal tell me that it was the, one of the most symmetrical makeups she's ever seen on the show, I was like, I, I, can, I can die now. Like, I'm okay. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm done. All right, I quit. I was like, all right, I won. <laughs> but um, so that one was amazing. And also because it was so it was a deeply rooted story in my childhood to be able to bring that character. But I also like the Homecoming Queen. Like, I. I, even though they didn't necessarily like, the, like I was a little too ambitious for them, but go big or go home in my opinion. Um, and so that one for me was also a little bit of like, you know, you become really attached to these characters because you're so focused on them. And I know for a lot of us, like our art is our life, our path, that's all of our passion. And that's why we do what we do because we love it. And so every single one of them I have like a certain, like I just have a little place in my heart for them because they're all just like, you know, my children. So, uh, but definitely uh, the two of those have been my favorite so far. Do you have a question back there? 